Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Derek Hardball, Crazy Good Advisor Video. Um, today I'm doing a little, as you see by title, a PSA. Just do more of a commentary today. Um, no showing off no, any cards today. Um, I was debating about doing this video. I was debating about it because I don't want to come across as being a negative video. I want to be positive. We're, uh, a lot of craziness in the world going on, so I want to be positive. But at the same time, I want to uh, give you my two thoughts on some PSA, on some uh, TPG PSA and other uh, thoughts and ideas in my head I thought I'd share. Uh, <clears throat> first, a couple of new weeks ago, I suppose nobody mentioned it, that uh, some big news in the hobby is that uh, CGC, the major comic card, comic book uh, uh, grading company, is now going to sports cards. I think it's a great idea. Um, when you, I think there's room for a fourth party grader. Uh, more on that later. But uh, there's a couple thoughts on why I do not send, spend my money with PSA. Uh, a couple uh, uh, footnotes uh, uh, notes before I get into this. All this on top of is from a collecting standpoint, not from a flipping standpoint. So um, this is all from uh, in collecting. So I don't care about uh, that's my mindset. Not so much how much money I can make off of my graded cards or anything, just uh, my thoughts in, in graded cards as a collector, not as a, as a flipper. Second is I do own PSA cards because I buy the card, not the grade or the company. I see a card in the condition I like, I buy it no matter what the uh, grading company is and, and the actual grade. If it's a card I like, the price I like, I'll get it. So I do have some PSA cards, but I do not spend money directly to PSA. This is why I don't. First reason uh, is not because of all the trimming scandals and all that stuff, because that's probably the obvious first thought everybody has in my, everybody's mind. But uh, I think PSA, at least uh, one person, a, uh, a few people, is in cahoots with the trimmers and the doctors. And um, and uh, so I don't know all the privy to this. That's my uh, theory. That's my um, assumption, I guess. But these are two thoughts I have that's, it's all totally independent of the trimming scandal why you don't spend money with PSA. This is sort of idealistic, um, sort of, uh, um, what's the word? I'm, I guess idealist is the right word. Uh, why I don't do it is kind of uh, uh, what I think. First of all is that uh, PSA, the parent company, is a um, publicly trained owned, owned company, which I'm not a fan of because if you're a, uh, publicly trained over you have shareholders when you have shareholders you have to satisfy the shareholders when you have satisfied shareholders you have to worry about profit margin and profits and sales and all that stuff uh, less so much about uh, the company this, this customer service the integrity of the of the goods no matter what uh, uh, goods and services whatever uh, genre of uh, of uh, service and goods and companies you're in so uh, PSA would you know worry about more about the profits and the money and uh, and the satisfied shareholders more so than they would do with the integrity of the grades and the cars and such the same reason why i don't bank at a bank because they have all these fees and they have shareholders and stuff like that go to credit union you get better rates you get better uh customer service and just get just better overall life experience it's the same mentality i have with the grading card company i rather have a grading card company that uh is customer service first, integrity first, more so than sales, profits, and shareholders, and all that jazz. That's reason number one. Reason number two I don't like PSA is the set registry. Now, I like the idea, I like the idea of a set registry that, you know, gets people involved, but I don't understand why people need a set registry to buy stuff. If that's what's your thing, I guess that's your thing, but for me, it's like you buy the card if you like the card. Not because of some random register set and up on the internet, but as a general thing, set registries I'm okay with because it gets people active in the hobby. Oh, I can collect these cards I normally would not collect, or buy these cards I normally collect, or learn about players. Like maybe it's like a, a set registry of the first um, uh, blacks in each major league team. I think is a set registry. That's a good thing. You learn about these players in the past when you get these cards. That's a good thing. I think. But the thing I hate about the set registry that it's, it has a ranking system, and I think that's totally stupid. It's totally bad for the hobby. 
It promotes competition within the hobby, and it should never ever, there's not one reason where one collector should compete against another collector. You buy what you want to buy at the pace you want to pay, at the pace you can afford, and and enjoy it there. Don't try to compete with anybody else's. The, the set registries are like rankings between the, the average um, median grade. If you have the Nolan Ryan set registry and your average grades are 6.7, so oh, I got I'm ranked 30th. I got to get up higher, so I got to upgrade all my Nolan Ryan cards to an eight or nine. That's not healthy. That's not good. That that promotes the doctoring and trimmers as much as anything in the world, and I think it's stupid. If you want to have a set registry, just have a set registry like a checklist. Okay, this is all the Nolan Ryan cards. Check it off when you have it. Complete it. That's all you got to do. Next, next is that registry. Don't have a competition. Don't have a rankings. Don't have any of this stuff. We don't want to know who uh, Joe Blow in Kansas and, and Jenny Smith in New York or whatever that their rankings are. We don't need to know that. Just complete your rankings the pace you want. And that's what it is. I don't like the rankings whatsoever. I think it's a terrible idea. Um, of course, the PSA thinks it's great because they're, they're constantly making money off tr uh, off of uh, scans and stuff like um, grades and stuff like that and constantly buying up grades and all that stuff. That's business model PSA. That's why I, cannot, I don't like it at all. It promotes competition. And no matter who you are as a collector, how level you're a beginner or you're a lifelong collector, you should never, ever, ever, ever feel like you're competing against anybody else, either with your best friend, your family member, or uh, some random person on a data sheet and uh, you see on the internet from four, five, six states away. Never, ever should feel a competition. And that's why I don't like the set registry. And that's my two biggest reasons why, beyond the trimming scandal and all that stuff, I do not spend money with PSA. It's kind of idealistic, but... That's how I feel and that's how I do things. If I don't believe in the company itself, I won't spend money with the company. That's how it is. It's how I am in real life and how I am with uh, in the collecting. Um, you're probably curious about the um, the other two uh, grading companies, BGS, Beckett. For, to be honest, uh, I think they're a has-been company. They haven't done anything um, innovative in the last, what, 20 years? Nobody goes by the Beckett Price Guide. Does anybody even buy the Beckett Price Guides anymore? Subscribe to Beckett Price Guides anymore? Uh, they're, they haven't done anything. Market, Beckett, Beckett Marketplace is terrible compared to other uh, newer sites. Um, the the uh, grades are fine, I guess, but uh, they're still in cahoots with the uh, the trimmers and scammers. They're, they're deep in the mud with them. Um, you want to ask to about subgrades? I have an idea with that that in a minute subgrades i do like idea like the subgrades but i have an idea with that more so than later as for sgc i think um uh, they're the best of the three and the most consistent graders but uh still i think there's a room for a fourth which goes to mind on to cgc the comic book thing um for i for I, i'm not a comic book guy so i don't know and their coins and they do other stuff too like artwork or magazines and posters or something rather like that but they're, they're very reputable i understand they're a worldwide thing so i don't know if think they're a public trading company but uh, if, if somebody knows that for sure let me know in the comments but i think there's totally room for a fourth person fourth company and here's my thoughts on that and um and what my ideas are for uh grades for the submissions and, and more transparency in the uh in grading first of all cgc i understand from the website that the graders don't uh, know who the the uh person who sends uh cards and they just or whatever comics and coins they just get a group of stuff here and here's your grades you do your work and this is it and that's fine i don't want to know that this guy here is sending thousand cards and this guy sends 10 cards they should get automatically the same uh uh standards and grades and and um, so forth. Um, so I'm f all for that. Um, so they're hiring, I guess, the top sports cars graders and stuff like that. And you might think um, that uh, um, the uh, they might hire people from SG SGC, PSA, and Beckett, and they might just have the same thing. But if they have the CGC or any other fourth or uh, thing have strict policies and procedures in place. 
um, I think that uh, they all uh, have a, a very reputable product. Um, as a collector, I want them to come in very strict and fair and consistent grades. I don't want to be a loose 9 or a loose 10. Be strict, um, be fair, be consistent. Um, I don't want like all of a sudden a company like a PSA is kind of known for this. All of a sudden a 9, these 10s are also, you know, you have out there and they're excited to uh, um, up their uh, strictness and uh, rules and and degrading also the tens are more like nines and the new tens are more like the new old tens. There's just still consistency. How can you tell what's is what? That's terrible. So if you come in strict, come in right away, strict and um, uh, consistent grades and keep it that throughout, you have a, 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 a solid product. Um, second thing is, you know, obviously is the uh, slab itself is, is eye appealing and stuff like that, but it's no big deal for me because if the grades are inconsistent and the slabs are awesome looking, like, oh my God, these slabs are awesome. These flips are good. These strict, it's like putting a uh, lipstick on a pig. You got a crappy product, but all the things around it's all great, but who cares? So I'd rather have consistency with the uh, with the cards and, the sh and the that, but I want the slabs itself, the, the design doesn't have to be, as long as it's sturdy and it's, it's solid. It's fine with me. I don't care how what the, the slab and the flip looks like, to be honest. As long as it's it's a solid thing, I don't care what the bells and whistles it has. Um, second thing is that another thing is that a fourth party company has come in with a post grade scandal. So if they take a big um, chunk in a market, or at least a partial chunk of the market, in the future, you know they come back. You see any buyers that you know what? Um, this card is came. This company came in post uh, trimming scandal. I trust this guy more than the PSA, the BGS, the SGC, and I'll buy this opposed to the others because I know this is this is solid, more solid than the others. That's another thing I think there's a room for. As for a couple of ideas um, with subgrades and stuff like that, I mentioned. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going to try to wrap it up quickly. Is that um, I think. I like the SGC idea of, of you know, taking a picture of the card and, and when you get graded and such. And I like the BGS idea that it's, it has the subgrades. How about combining the two? So when I don't think it takes any much longer than to just add a subgrade. So instead of adding subgrades to the slabs, maybe it's when you take a picture of it on the internet, you can just load it up. It actually has the subgrades on that. Opposed to actually slabs, you don't want it to either or, you know, it doesn't have to. It depends on what the, the flip looks like, the slab look like. But uh, if you have the actual, you say type in the item number, the serial number, and it pops up your picture, it also pops pop, pop down there the subgrades. It's all in one information, and it's all app friendly and everything like that, like the PSA set the registry app. Just log in everything. It doesn't have to be all on the thing, but it has you still access to what the why was graded subgrades, you know, centering the surface, the you know, everything else with it. Um, my other thought is for the transparency reasons, I think each person, each grader should have their name or employee number within on each slab. It doesn't have to, I don't want their actual names. I don't want Joe Smith and John Anderson or whatever to, to uh, say who that is. I want um, um, some uh, privacy with that. I, you know, it's a good idea that way. Um, say within that online picture or the set, you know, app picture, it has the subgrades. It has like employee number 11578K45, whatever, something like that. And that's the person who grades it. And um, um, that way, if somebody comes, a scan comes back, the, the company itself, they know who's actually, who's the bad ones. They can just go through that person's grades in the past and go through and see what happens. That's one good thing. Another good thing is that, uh, of course, I don't want the companies within people. This is totally um, private, so not even the graders' co-workers would know who the, the grading thing is. Like, the only thing person knows is, like, a boss or a, or a in the, in the database and inside the boss is only has passwords to or something like that so it's totally private that way there's no uh, chance of uh, 
outside coercion or bribery or pressure or anything. It's totally private. And the collector says, okay, I like, you know, with this uh, Boda's, uh, you know, blowouts thing, they can go through instead of trying to figure out, you know, numbers and stuff and, and the, and the uh, times they sent the stars and grouped together and stuff. They just go through this person's, the one or two people's thing else and they just go back and check that and as a collector says you know what? i like this person's got great grades and consistency this person i'll collect you know i can go check on that and see what others you know cards that person grader did and that's you know come up that grade oh i like this person's grade i'll buy this one and this person's is an you know some some type of uh transparency within uh greater itself and of course this I want to set up where the uh, the process of a, your cards get shipped in like okay it's been picked up by this and this and this and this and this process and a lot more transparency and that that's my thoughts and TB on, on uh, improving the grading companies I have you know I think it's great it's a is a good thing but just the right now is just the execution is terrible that's why I do not send any cards in right now. It's just terrible. PSA, I know, is a big boy in the, in the park, but I have no trust in them. It comes down to trust. I don't trust the company. Um, so that's my thoughts on PSA and TBG. Uh, that's my ideas. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like or not like, comment below. I uh, hope you enjoyed the day, and thank you for watching.